Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about tiling textures. Now, one great application of a tiling texture is in the texture property of a brush. So you can take a basic hard round brush like this, turn on texture, and make it much more interesting, almost as if you're painting on top of a textured surface. But the only way that this works well in Photoshop is if the source photograph that you're making your background texture from can tile infinitely in both directions. And this source image, well, it doesn't really tile. Now this is going to get a little bit process heavy here. So I want to warn you guys in advance, you don't need to follow every button that I'm pressing. Making a tiling texture is very well documented on the internet, and I mainly want to introduce you to the major concepts. Do you remember the game Pac-Man? where if you go off one side of the screen, you magically come back on the other side? Well, that's all we're doing here. On both the horizontal and vertical axes of this document, we're going to push the pixels in one direction, and they'll wrap around to the other direction. And what's left is a seam. And you have to get rid of that seam such that it's a perfect seamless tile. For this example, my goal is going to be this bit of rock. And I got this rock from cgtextures.com, which is a great free resource for texture photos of all sorts. So I'll begin by copying a rough square out of the center of this. And if I put this inside of my tiling document, which is a perfect square, it happens to be 512 by 512 pixels, but you could do whatever you wanted. You could probably guess that this is not going to tile in both directions properly. Now, it's important to have this cropped all the way down to the outside first. And you can do that by simply grabbing the crop tool, covering the entire dimensions, and then hitting enter. So there's no extra pixels hiding beyond the borders of this image. So to see if it tiles, you use the offset filter, which is an other offset. And you can either move these sliders on the horizontal and vertical axes, or you can type in numbers. So I'm going to put them both about 100 pixels off and say OK. And it's a bit hard to tell on this rock, but there's definitely a divide. And this is where it's not properly tiling. So you can see right here, there's a bit of a problem. Same goes for right here. And that's because that's when I offset the image, the pixels went down in one direction and then wrapped around back up into the top of the canvas. So it's my job to get rid of that seam. And luckily, Photoshop is really great at this operation. There's a bunch of tools that were designed for removing red eye and getting rid of blemishes that make this very easy. So I'm going to zoom in a bit here. And you can see where this hard line is. And on a new layer, I'm going to try using the Spot Healing Brush tool and making sure I've checked the Sample All Layers button. And I'm just going to drag this along that seam. And there you can see Photoshop has pretty magically gotten rid of that line. And I'm going to do the same on the horizontal. Now, if you're a video game artist and your job involves making textures, you're probably clawing at the screen right now because this is not a very technical or detailed way of doing it. But for the purposes of having a textured brush, this is really plenty detailed. It doesn't need to be too perfect. Now, to check if I've gotten rid of the seams, I'm going to do the offset filter once again. So I'm going to flatten these two layers together and then once again run the offset filter. And if you don't want to work with these sliders, you can actually grab the image and drag and then let go and it'll refresh. So I can see that there's still a bit of a vertical bar here that's a problem. So I'm going to try a couple other techniques. I'm going to use the lasso tool and grab a chunk of the rock, make a copy of that, and paste it on top. And this will make sort of a patch. And I'll rotate it a bit and deform it a tiny bit. Again, environment artists are probably really mad right now because this is in some ways a sloppy way to handle it. But for our purposes, 
it'll work just fine. And then using a mask or the eraser tool, I'll blend these edges together. The primary goal here is to get rid of any obvious tiling. So big vertical or horizontal stripes are really the problem. And to bring it back to the beginning of the video, you can take that basic hard round brush, turn on texture, and on the list of patterns, I can select that same tile that I just created, and now my brush looks as if it's painting on top of a rocky texture. And this might be great for painting rocks. Custom brushes are a great example of using a tile, but really, it's just the tip of the iceberg. It's one of those skills that once you know how to use the offset filter and to make a seamless tile, you'll find yourself using it all the time. So if any of you out there have a lot more experience making tiles, like maybe you're an environment texture artist, speak up in the comments. I'd love to hear some specific tools that you use to make this a little bit cleaner and a little less sloppy. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for future videos.